بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا ونبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم يا ربنا لك الحمد كما ينبغي لجلال وجهك وعظيم سلطانك اللهم افتح علينا افتح العارفين يا أرحم الراحمين ما شاء الله و today إن شاء الله we will be talking about uh, سورة الطارق and إن شاء الله we'll be talking about سورة الأعلى and inshallah, then the last surah will be Surah Al Ghashiyah. Bismillah ar Rahman ar Rahim. Uh, as for Surah Al Tariq, uh, Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to recite this surah and uh, he, he wanted to emphasize on the day after and on building and encouraging in uh, making the faith of the newcomers of uh, the Muslims he uh, to increase their faith so subhanallah he will he starts bismillah rahman rahim so the uh, the surah is uh, named at-tariq after the first, the second uh, word in the surah, in the first ayah, was samai wa tariq. So, what is a tariq? So, Allah, first of all, Allah subhanahu wa taala is giving an oath. He's swearing by the heavens and by a tariq. A tariq is the visitant by night. So, what is this? What's going on? He's he. Allah is uh, swearing by the heavens and what he has placed in it of radiant stars. So the word as-sama has uh, been mentioned in the Quran 310 places between singular and plural and between uh, um, identified and unidentified. So what we see uh, and that that uh, is seen in the word as-sama or sama, samawat, and as-samawat. So what we see of the sama of the skies of the heaven is the lower heaven, as-sama dunya. Actually, if um, if we look at um, well, no, Einstein, the uh, phys uh, physicist, he, at the end of his, at the uh, last part of his life, he wrote a book uh, entitled Out of My Later Days, Ayam uh, al-Akhira. So he, in his book, he mentioned, uh, he mentioned that, so uh, it's, we, if we are looking at the skies, then it's, complete darkness at night. But what we can realize out uh, behind this darkness is beauty, that no beauty is like it. And perfection, that no perfection is like it. And power, that no power is like it. And if a person who is living and who could not see this beauty, and this uh, greatness, then he is a dead living person. So the skies which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sweared, uh, has given the oath in, has sworn in, is something magnificent. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala always uh, swears with magnificent things. So imagine the uh, the greatness of the skies. It, it, it's a proof of the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's a proof of how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created and perfectioned. And, and we saw earlier in the previous surahs that we have been uh, explaining so far, how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about the skies. Now, if we ask what is a tariq? 
this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is asking. Wama adraka matariq. Oh Muhammad, what do you know of this visitant at night? What do you know of the night comer? So who is, what is atariq? Atariq is answered in the following ayah. It's a najmu thaqib. It's the star, the illuminating star. It's the pulsating star. So stars appear at night and they disappear during the day. Stars are created from smoke of the, in the sky. So when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would uh, inhalate them, they will turn to smoke into the skies. But when at, at, at some point, their density gets so high that they get to, to turn so quickly around themselves that they would produce radiation that will be as if it is knocking on the, on the sky. So this star uh, um, it's out of its density, it's continuous radiation, as we mentioned, from the uh, mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is that he made it away from us so that the sound of knocking does not hurt us. So Allah is swearing by something magnificent. What is he swearing about? In kullu nafsin lamma alayha hafil. Each soul, each human being has guardians who record their deeds, whether bad or evil, whether good or evil. And each and every person will be held accountable for their deeds. Life is not just chaos, but it's big responsibility. Everyone is going to be reckoned for what he says, for what he does, and for everything. So how man is created now, we will see that this is a proof of Allah's ability to return him, to return man, to resurrect man, that's the same way that he has created him. So Allah says, فَلْيَنْظُرِ الْإِنسَانُ مِمَّا خُلَقُ Then let man think of what he is created. Contemplate about his starting point. It's he has been creating from the sexual fluid of the man, of the mom, and of the dad. This fluid, this fluid uh, is gushing. He is created from gushing forth water. Where does it, this water come from? Where does it, this fluid come from? يَخْرُجُ مِنْ بَيْنِ الصُّلْبِ وَالتَّرَائِبِ Proceeding from between the backbone of the man and the ribs of the woman. So the fetus will not be created except from the merging of the two fluids together. Verily, he is able, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is able to get him back for, resurrec uh, for resurrection and for reckoning. He has created him from something very, uh, uh, yeah, from almost nothing, just water, gushing water, but he is able to get him back. So, on the day of judgment, man will have no power, man will have no assistance, except what he has prepared and except what he has worked on and what he has brought with him to the to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. On that day where, where all secrets will be exposed and made manifest. There, all the secrets, all the intentions, everything, it will be exposed. There will, the hidden secrets will be, will be made open and will be known. 
No one can he uh, hide anything. No one can veil anything. Then he will not have, he will have no power or any helper. He will not be able to save himself from the torment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if he if Allah decides to punish him or, or according to his deeds. And no one no one will be able to save him. So this is the first oath that Allah has given in this surah. Now Allah will give another oath. By the sky, which gives rain again and again. So one of the meanings of the word Raj is the rain that comes back again and again, uh, on and on. And we know that the sun, uh, because of the heat, the water of the seas, ocean, and other uh, will uh, evaporate, clouds will form, and uh, uh, rain will uh, uh, will come down. So, were it not for this, people will be destroyed. There will be the drought. So Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is uh, swearing of the skies that has the rain coming down and down again and again well ardi that is sada and by the earth which splits uh, which splits because why so that uh, this splitting uh, is to bring forth plant and growth well ardi that is sada so what's the oath now innahu laqawlun fasl Allah is swearing to the truthfulness of the Quran and to the failure of those who oppose it. Innahu laqawlun fasl. It's a true word. It's the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wa ma huwa bil hazl. And it's not a thing for amusement. No. Rather, it is serious and true. So this is the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Innahum yakiduna kayda. Verily, the, the non believers, the, uh, the non believers of Mecca were uh, plotting always. Innahum yakiduna kayda. They were devising a plan. They were plotting against Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They were plotting to candle, to blow the candle of this religion. They were plotting to hinder the people from getting into Islam. They were plotting of hurting the, the Muslims. They were plotting of so many bad things. Innahum yakiduna kayda. Wa akidu kayda. And I am plotting also a plot. That they will not succeed. And they will not be, and, and they will uh, not get to their point, but they will be defeated. The light which they are trying to, their utmost to put out, will spread far and wide. So just leave them for a while to have what they want. Do not hasten. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, um, he's telling us that no matter how those non-believers, how those uh, 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 people who, who deny those, those people, no matter how long they live, no matter how uh, great their life is, but just leave them and do not hasten their punishment. They will be punished. At the end, they will come back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. At the end, they will see their punishment. They will face, uh, they will face their destiny. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in Allah yumhil wa la yuhmil. Allah leaves for a while, but he would never neglect. And this is a, 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 a lesson for us to, to practice patience. 
so many things might might be very difficult, but at the end there will be a result. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would never neglect anything. So each and every person will have their deeds records. This is what the ayah starts with, and this is how the, uh, the, the surah, and this is how the surah ends with. There will be an end, and everyone will have his record, either in his right hand or in his left hand, according to their deeds, according to what they have uh, done in this dunya. So we move now, inshallah, to Surah Al-A'la. And uh, Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, liked to read this surah uh, and the surah after Surah al ghashiya during Eid prayer. And in Jum'ah prayer. And if it happens that Eid and uh, Jum'ah, uh, uh, if it happens that the Eid comes on the day of Jum'ah, then he would read these two surahs, once for Eid prayer, and he would repeat it for Jum'ah prayer. So Surah Al-A'la, this is one of the early surahs that was revealed to Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And the, uh, uh, the proof for that is the ayah, ayah number six in the surah, which, which says, We shall enable you to recite, then you shall not forget. And we will come to this, to this later. But here, uh, we, we see that Prophet Muhammad وسلم, was not accustomed to, ha to receive revelation. And he was afraid that he would forget its words. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala starts the surah by saying, Glorify or purify the name of your Lord, the Most High. Normally, a tasbih is a way of uh, respecting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, a way of showing greatness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When we see something, something so beautiful, uh, um, the first word that we say, subhanAllah, subhanAllah, glory to, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the most high. And whenever Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to read this ayah, Sabbih isma rabbika al-a'la, he used to say, Subhan rabbi al-a'la. And he, uh, uh, he uh, asked us to say this ayah, this, uh, to make this phrase, Subhan rabbi al-a'la, in our sujood. He said, Ij'aluha fi sujoodikum. And that's why when we do sujood, we say, Subhan rabbi al-a'la. And he used to say, في الركوع, when we make a ruku'ah, Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu said, سبحان ربي العظيم, and he asked us, اجعلوها في ركوعكم. So, glorifying Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. And there are so many hadiths in uh, the uh, uh, narrations that uh, assures the importance of uh, uh, tasbih. And the, uh, uh, for example, one of the hadith, كلمتان حبيبتان إلى الرحمن خفيفتان على اللسان ثقيلتان في الميزان سبحان الله وبحمده سبحان الله العظيم. So just two short uh, uh, phrases which are so easy for the tongue to say, but they are so loved by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they have a lot of weight in the scale. سبحان الله وبحمده سبحان الله العظيم. To say it, keep repeating it. Subhanallah wa bihamdih, subhanallah al azim. And we know that al baqiyat al salihat, uh, subhanallah wa alhamdulillah wa la ilaha illallah wa allahu akbar. So just subhanallah, subhanallah, tasbihullah subhanahu wa ta'ala is one of the uh, ways of glorifying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sabbihis marabbika al a'la. 
الذي خلق فسوى الله سبحانه وتعالى is the one who created and he proportioned he created all all in heaven all in earth all in between he created the universe he created everything and he fashioned every creation in the best form he gave a balance to everything beauty order coherence لا ترى في خلق الله عوجا ولا نقصا You never see that there is something wrong in the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You never see that, oh, this needs to be adjusted. لا ترى في خلق الرحمن من تفاوت. Nothing needs to be adjusted. Everything is created perfectly. والذي قدر فهدى. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who sets a destiny and showed The way. ربنا الذي أعطى كل شيء خلقه ثم هدى. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, our Lord is the one who gave to each thing its form. So he gave the form for everything. He gave it form, a nature, and then he guided it aright. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, made certain distance specific distance between sky and earth between the sun and earth if this distance go, gets closer or further then disasters will happen speeds densities orbits everything is created perfectly allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, sayyidina muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam says إن الله قدر مقادير الخلائق قبل أن يخلق السماوات والأرض بخمسين ألف سنة وكان عرشه على الماء Verily, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordained the measure of all creation 50,000 years before he created the heavens and the earth Everything is ordained perfectly والذي أخرج المرعى This is one example of the perfection of creation. He brought out all kinds of vegetation and crops. So you see that it's the same water that irrigates the flowers, but each flower has special color, special uh, uh, aroma, everything, even, even the fruits, You will, see, you will see different fruits, different tastes, different things. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created and perfected. فَجَعَلَهُ So Allah created everything and all kinds of vegetation, all kinds of plants. فَجَعَلَهُ غُثَاءً أَحْوَى And whatever gets out of earth, the plants, everything. So at one point, Then Allah will make these uh, plants, these things that he has, he, he brought out. They will be dry, then their color will darken, and they will be blown away by winds and swept away, swept away by floods. فَجَعَلَهُ غُثَاءً غُثَاءً is the something that's so... Useless, something that's trivial. You don't, it doesn't, you don't even, uh, yani, uh, spend a, a single second of just by looking at it. It's worthless. So, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, khalaq. He created. He perfected. He did everything. But this ayah tells us that no matter. How nice everything will is. All if you look outside, you will see all the greenery, all the th all the uh, things, the, the nice few things that Allah has created. But He also tells us that at one point they will be dark and that they will be dry and uh, they will be worthless. So this, as if it's a sh a, a picture for us. That will emphasize that everything in this dunya is going to vanish. Nothing is staying 
forever. And this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to get from inside the words, from between the lines. Hey man, focus on your akhirah, focus on the day of judgment, focus on your deeds, because nothing is going and nothing is going forever. Everything will have an end. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala now, if, if we go to the first ayah, then Allah says, Sabbi hisma rabbika al-a'la. So glorify Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we mentioned that this is one of the uh, uh, surahs that was revealed at the very beginnings of the revelation. So now Allah is saying, Sanuqri'uka fala tansa. So we shall enable you to recite, then you shall not forget. When Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was receiving the revelation, when uh, Jibreel alayhi salam used to come down with the uh, Quran, Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to repeat whatever he hears after, he used to repeat it after Jibreel alayhi salam. He was just afraid that he might forget it. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, listen and you will not forget. You just listen. Then you shall not forget it. Illa ma sha Allah. Except what Allah wants you to uh, forget. What does this mean? Once Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu was praying, uh, he was leading a prayer, and he uh, forgot to say an, an ayah. And one of the Sahaba said, Ya Rasulullah, did you forget this ayah or was it abrogated? And he said, uh, call, call, is, is Ubay bin Kaab here? And he, uh, Sayyidina Ubay said, yes, Ya Rasulullah. He said, did I forget to say this ayah? Because uh, Sayyidina Ubay was the best in memorizing and knowing the Quran after Rasulullah said, uh, one of the best actually. So he said, yes, Ya Rasulullah, you forgot to mention this ayah. Well, this tells us that this is al-insan uh, yansa. A human being forgets. And this happened also, if you remember, uh, with previous uh, prophets, when Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam was going in the boat just to meet, to meet Sayyidina al-Khadr, and Sayyidina Yusha forgot the fish, and the fish went away. What did Sayyidina uh, Yusha say? وَمَا أَنْسَانِيهُ إِلَّا الشَّيْطَانِ I forgot, but the, the shaitan made me forget it. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, سَنُقْرِئُكَ فَلَا تَنْسَى You will not forget the Qur'an. You will not forget to work by the Qur'an. And this is why we see uh, uh, Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam كَانَ قُرْآنًا يَمْشِي He was just a, a live Qur'an. He was, full, he was following the Qur'an in every aspect. So, we know that uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he says, إِلَّا مَا شَاءَ اللَّهُ Except what Allah wills. This, mean, this gives us, connects us to another ayah. In uh, Surah Al-Baqarah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, مَا نَنْسَخْ مِنْ آيَةٍ أَوْ نُنْسِهَا نَأْتِ بِخَيْرٍ مِنْهَا أَوْ مِثْلِهَا We do not abrogate a verse or cause it to be forgotten, except that we bring forth one better than it or similar to it. And we know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was very merciful with the uh, new Muslims at that time, at the time of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa One of the examples we can say where they used to drink wine, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala stopped them from doing that on phases. He didn't say just throw the wine and you are not going to do it. No. First, the first ayah said, يسألونك عن الخمر والبيسر قل فيهما إثم كبير ومنافع للناس. They will ask you, Muhammad, about wine. So say that there is a, there is a, a big sin 
in doing it. And also there are, there, there are some benefits of it, uh, in it. Then they were, uh, another ayah was revealed later. Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu la taqrabu salata wa antum sukara. Oh, people who believe, do not pray after you drank wine, after you got uh, drunk. And the last ayah, so the second ayah abrogated the first one. Now the last ayah which abrogated both of the, the both previous two ayahs, Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu inna mal khamru wal maysir wal ansab wal azlam rizsun min amadi shaytan fajtanibu. Wine is something an evil, something, uh, uh, an act of shaitan, so stop it. So this is how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes a uh, uh, prophet, makes people forget some, some ayahs just because it was abrogated. So now, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala goes on, إِنَّهُ يَعْلَمُ الْجَهْرَ وَمَا يَخْفَى so Allah, only He knows what's apparent and what's hidden. Nothing is concealed or hidden from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He knows everything. Whether deeds, statements, anything. And we will... Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, Ya Muhammad, we will guide you to that what is easy. Allah made it easy for Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to remember the Quran. And Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, I have been sent with the Hanafiyyah. Al Hanafiyyah is the legacy, the legacy of Ibrahim alayhi salam. That has lots of relaxation. The Sharia of Islam will not be difficult. It's easy. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Inna ma'al usri yusra, inna ma'al usri yusra. Remember, well, and, uh, uh, this is in uh, uh, the uh, Surah uh, Ashr. Uh, so the word al-usr starts with al. And al means the. And whatever is mu'arraf starts with the, it means that it's one. So, inna ma'al usri yusra, yusra, which is ease, has no uh, definite article bef before it. So, it's not uh, counted here as uh, uh, the same. Because if you look at the other ayah, inna ma'al usri yusra, inna ma'al usri yusra. So, al usr in both ayahs is the same thing. But yusra, because it has the at the beginning, al. While the word yusra has nothing, so it's two different things. And this is what Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, says. So one, one difficulty will not overcome two eases. And Prophet Muhammad, وسلم, whenever he was, uh, he was given the choice to get to choose anything, any of two things, then he would choose the easier. The easier one. And of his, uh, Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, of his uh, uh, advice is always, yassiru wa la tu'assiru. Give ease and don't make it hard for people. فذكر إن فعتي الذكرى. Therefore, remind in case the reminder prophets. Whenever you see something, a person who is in need of an advice and you will, you will see that he has some khayr in him, then give your advice. Say, The reminder will be received by those who fear. So if your words are sincere to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and if they get out of your heart, then they will get immediately to the heart of the listener and they will affect him. Because if he believes in Allah and he fears the day after, one word might guide him, might get him back to the right track. But it will not be avoided by the wretched who will, will enter the great fire. He will neither die or live. 
the, his torment will be eternal. So that person will not get benefit of your good words, of your good nasiha. قَدْ أَفْلَحَ مَنْ تَزَكَّى وَذَكَرَ اسْمَ رَبِّهِ فَصَلَّى Indeed, whosoever purifies himself shall achieve success. So he purifies himself from despised characteristics. He follows Allah's orders. He follows uh, Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He remembers always that al-mar'u ma'a man ahab. So this is the shortcut. A person will be resurrected with the person whom he loves. This is what he has in mind always. قَدْ أَفْلَحَ مَنْ تَزَكَّى He will not permit shaitan to whisper for him. And he remembers the name of his Lord and he will perform prayers. And uh, he, while he is performing his prayer, then what will happen? He is focusing on his prayer. He is present in his prayer. He is present. He knows that when he when he makes uh, sujood, then he is pr making sujood to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He feels that he is as if he is in, uh, in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and making sujood for him. When he says, At-tahiyyatu lillahi, he knows exactly that. He is greeting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So how, how can he be... Uh, uh, how can his mind be uh, working or be engaged in something other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? He wants to be present, so he memorizes a few verses and he reads them while praying. That will make him focus more on his prayer. He, he will not be thinking of this and that and this and that. No, it's, it's praying time. One of the righteous ladies uh, was uh, performing uh, wudu, was making wudu before Adhan time, a little bit before Adhan time. And uh, her son stopped by and he said, oh, is, it, is uh, the prayer in? And she says, no, I like to go to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala before he calls me. These are the people who have presence, who want to be with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who want to have strong ties with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, strong bonds with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Those are the people who love akhirah. They know that the world is worthless in comparison to the hereafter. But those who don't, recognize this. Allah says about them, بَلْ تُؤْثِرُونَ الْحَيَاةَ الدُّنْيَا Rather, you prefer this life, the life of this world, you prefer this life and what it contains. This life makes you, keeps you away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But remember, no one is going to take anything with him. A person will die, will leave everything behind, no money, no jewelry, no nothing, no nothing. And he will take only his deeds. Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Wallahi law anna dunya tusawi inda Allahi janaha ba'uda lama saqa al-kafir minha sharbata ma. If this dunya is worth a, a wing, a wing, just a wing of a mosquito, then you, Allah will not give uh, one sip of water to an unbeliever. But the believers know. The reward of the hereafter is better and more la lasting. How can a wise man give his focus to this dunya, to the vanishing dunya, and uh, neglects the importance of the life after? So all of this, which... Hada here means قَدْ أَفْلَحَ مَنْ تَزَكَّى refers back to that ayah at the beginning. قَدْ أَفْلَحَ مَنْ تَزَكَّى وَذَكَرَ اسْمَ رَبِّهِ فَصَلَّى Do you remember when we talked, when we said this word? قَدْ أَفْلَحَ مَنْ تَزَكَّى This is ayah, verse 14, if you want to go back. 
Indeed, whoever purifies himself shall achieve success. So what is this? This has been mentioned in the previous scriptures. In the Hadal of Suhuf al-Ula, verily this is mentioned in the former scriptures. Suhuf Ibrahim and Musa, the scriptures of Musa and Ibrahim. So what is that? It's one message for all prophets. Allah is one. There is life. There is death. There is uh, resurrection. There is uh, reckoning. There is heaven. There is hellfire. So the message is the same since the beginning until the end. We have to be careful. أَمْ لَمْ يُنَبَّأْ بِمَا فِي صُحُفِ مُوسَى وَإِبْرَاهِيمَ الَّذِي وَفَّى أَلَّا تَزِرُ وَازِرَةُ وِزْرَ أُخْرَى No one will bear the burden, sin of another, of another person. وَأَنْ لَيْسَ لِلْإِنسَانِ إِلَّا مَا سَعَى A person will just be rewarded with, with what he does. وَأَنَّ سَعْيَهُ سَوْفَ يُرَى His deeds will be, uh, will be uh, revealed. He will be recompensed with full recompense. Good, bad, heaven, fire, subhanAllah. Then in Surah Al-Ghashiyah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, هَلْ أَتَاكَ حَدِيثُ الْغَاشِيَةِ Do you know what will happen in the day after? Heaven, fire, reward, punishment. وَجُوهٌ يَوْمَئِذٍ خَاشِعَةً some faces on that day will be humiliated because of what because of what is waiting for them they will realize that they are losers they will be humiliated because of the sins that they have done amilatun nasiba tasla naran hamia they will be working working hard in hell fire they used to work hard in for the dunya and they exhausted themselves in dunya but now they will be working hard in the uh, hell fire they will be uh, 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 pulling the, uh, the the torment with them the coughs the they will be burned with with they will be burned severely then they will be given a drink from a boiling spring. The heat has reached its maximum limit and boiling point. So if they ask for water, this is their drink. Boiling springs water. For them, there will be no food except from poisonous Thorny plant. This is the worst, the most disgusting thing to eat. This food will neither nourish nor avail from hunger against against hunger. So the intent in eating it will not be achieved. How how fearing fearful this image is, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is so merciful. He won't keep our hearts uh, scared. So he will talk about the the people, the winners, the people of of heavens, the people of paradise. Some faces on that day will be joyful. They show pleasure. They are glad with their effort. They will be pleased with their deeds. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be pleased with them and they will be pleased with him. In an elevated paradise, in a lofty garden. 
there in in paradise you will not hear any foolish words any rubbish words any useless words لا لغون فيها ولا تأثيم nothing useless will be heard on in paradise فيها عين جارية now let's let's see what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prepared. Allah says in one of the hadith Qudsi, I have prepared for my righteous slaves that which no eye has seen. مَا لَا عَيْنٌ رَأَتْ وَلَا أُذُنٌ سَمِعَتْ No ear has heard of. وَلَا خَطَرَ عَلَى قَلْبِ بَشَرْ And has never crossed the mind of my of any human being. فِيهَا سُرُرٌ مَرْفُوعًا The realm will be thrones raised high. Lofty delightful numerous couches when someone wishes to sit then they will lower themselves for him he will sit and he will be elevated up and cups set at hand cups are prepared cups are filled for whoever wants to drink they will be presented for everyone who, who wishes to have a sip or a drink and cushions will line up. Cushions are lined up to use for leaning and reclining. And the carpets spread spread around. So they are placed here and there. Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to look at his creatures that prove his power and greatness. So he gives us four different uh, images. So what are these images? Why do they not contemplate the camels? How they are created? Camels are very amazing creatures. So Allah, a camel is extremely powerful and strong. Just uh, a few, a, a little, just a little, a little water will suffice him for a week. Camels, if you want to look at them, they, you will see that they teach us patience. What are they? Are they looking at the skies, how they are raised high? No poles, nothing to hold it. Look at it. It's decorated. It's so nice to and relaxing to look at the skies at night, to enjoy the beauty of the skies. They don't look at, um, at the mountains, how they are rooted. We mentioned in, uh, we explained in Surah al naba in Ayah 7, وَالْجِبَالَ أَوْتَادًا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created the mountains as pegs to hold the earth in place and make it stable and firm. And we know that they are filled up with minerals. وَإِلَى الْأَرْضِ كَيْفَ سُطِحَتْ Look at the earth, how it's spread out to walk on, to extract and use what's inside. So all these examples show that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the Lord. He's the most great, the owner. He's the only one to be worshipped. فَذَكِّرْ إِنَّمَا أَنْتَ مُذَكِّرْ now, Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, this is uh, his duty now. The messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is only charged with delivering the message. فَذَكِّرْ إِنَّمَا أَنْتَ مُذَكِّرْ So remind them, you are only reminder. لَسْتَ عَلَيْهِمْ بِمُسَيْطِرٍ You are not a controller over them. They might accept, they might deny. إِلَّا مَنْ تَوَلَّى وَكَفَرْ However, those who turn away and disbelieve, what will happen? 
فيعذبه الله العذاب الأكبر الله will punish him with greatest punishment إن إلينا إيابهم Indeed to us is their return Everyone is resurrected Everyone will come back before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ثم إن علينا حسابهم Then verily for us will be the reckoning. So this is the message that we are all going to be resurrected. We are all going to be uh, um, before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Our deeds are going to be scaled. So if the deeds are good, then there will be a reward. But if the deeds are bad, then there will be severe punishment. Allahumma salli wa sallim wa barik ala Sayyidina Muhammad. Allahumma ya arham rahimin ya rabbal alameen, ya Allah, we ask you to be pleased with us when we come back to you. We ask you to resurrect us with Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He's the one whom we love. And he says, يُحْشَرُ الْمَرْءُ مَعَا أَمَنْ أَحَبُ The person will be resurrected with, the, with, the, with those whom he loves. وَصَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَى سَيِّدِنَا مُحَمَّدْ InshaAllah, we'll meet next week, inshaAllah. وَالسَّلَامُ عَلَيْكُمْ وَرَحْمَةُ اللَّهِ وَبَرَكَاتُهُ